morning, uh, church. <laughs> okay, I, I, I do hope that I am audible because I know that sometimes I can speak a little bit softly. Interesting enough that, you know, when you take a pause, it, it seems awkward and, and as if it should not be there. And if you continue pause long enough, some people will be beginning to ask, what's wrong with him? But there's something that um, I think it was Brent who said this, say, can we just allow God to be God? We all have our own definitions of what it means to come to church, to serve God. But can we just allow him to be God? Someone once said, life has to have that ontic referent of the eternal from which the temporal must find its relevance. In other words, we cannot live our lives with a view only to that which is happening around us. God is greater than that. This morning, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is centered around that. Us just allowing God to be God allowing God to show us a bigger picture of the little things that we go through. Second Kings chapter 18. In fact, before Second Kings, if you go to Numbers chapter 21, you find the people, the, the Israelites, they are complaining, complaining about the food, the manna, complaining about the water, complaining. And then God sends the serpents. Then the serpents start to bite them and they die. And then Moses had to make a bronze serpent. But when you go to 2 Kings chapter 18, you find Hezekiah taking over the throne. And one of the things that Hezekiah did was to break into pieces that bronze serpent. Because what had happened was that long after that incident, the people started uh, offering, making offerings to the serpent. That is who we are as people. When we find that which is good, when we find that which we like, we gravitate towards it and we want to camp there. And when we've come across those things which are not so good, which are difficult and hard and don't make sense, and sometimes even wrong, we reject them. But this view tends to limit God. But because it it, it reduces everything to experiences. You, You live your life according to your experiences. So if your experiences are going this way, that's how you define life. If your experiences are going that way, that's how you define life. But this morning, God is calling us to something greater than that. Amen. In the Bible, if you go to Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. The Israelites were under Roman rule, they were suffering. According to them, that is not how it should have been. They were promised the Messiah. They were, they were hoping that this Messiah could come and deliver them and get rid of the Romans. God knew about that. But the Bible says, in the fullness of time, he sent forth his son. 
Because God has a mind not just to the suffering, but God has a mind towards the bigger picture, which is his plan. And in this plan, the Messiah was only going to come in the fullness of time. The Greek have two words for time, which is chronos and kairos. Chronos has to do with seconds, minutes, days, and so on. But kairos is defined as an opportune moment or time. It is the right time or right moment that is the kairos. So God at the kairos sent forth his son. At the right time, he sent forth his son. But here's the thing. In our everyday lives, God takes us through those kairos moments. But if we're stuck in this definition of how things ought to be, we miss those moments. Because if your definition is that things are supposed to be good, things are supposed to be this way, then for you, you have a view of half of the picture. Perhaps let me give you a, a practical example. In your life, things are going well, but you get to a point where you don't have money. You lose your job, and things are difficult. You have to pay for school fees and all of those things that have to be uh, uh, you know, maintained at the end of the month. The natural man tends to have this view that says things are so difficult. It shouldn't be this way. Why did I lose my job? And in the midst of that, what then tends to happen is that what God intended through that Kairos moment is missed. Because that moment did not come by mistake. It says at the right time, he allowed it. Sometimes he may not have designed it himself, but he allowed it. But he didn't just allow it anyhow. He allowed it at the right time. But the flip side of that is this. Sometimes it's the good. It's not the difficult. Sometimes when it's the good, it's even more difficult. Or it's even easier to miss. Because then when things are good, you just tend to want to flow in that space forever. Things are good. I like this. I like that. And so on and so on. But then you, you, you miss the reason why those good times came. If you remember the story of Elijah, God says, wake up, eat. For the journey lies ahead. Wake up, eat. Now there's provision right now. Because in the journey that you're about to embark on, there, there's nothing. And you're going to have to be sustained by this moment that I'm giving you for you to be able to have sustenance. God will give us those good moments, good uh, events and, and people and things and so on. But there's still a bigger picture. There is still a bigger picture. And if we are not careful, we are going to be like the Israelites, either complaining about the manna or offering sacrifices to the bronze serpent. Some of these issues are not easy. And sometimes it's easier even to think about them globally as in glance over. But God is calling us to drill down. I mean, in our life group, we had an opportunity to talk about what is happening in our local church as in here. Hard issues are not easy sometimes. But sometimes you'll be surprised at what comes out when you bring a biblical perspective on things. Because sometimes we carry these ideas, these things that have an appearance of good. But when you, when you begin to shine God's light, you begin to see that they're not necessarily wrong, but they are limited. And because they are limited, then what they will produce is a limited view of what God is doing. Because there is, there is a bigger picture in terms of what God is doing. So if you look at what is happening in our church, it is so interesting when you talk to people. Some have even left, for example. And it's okay. Not that we don't care, but it's okay. 
Because sometimes we need to accept this idea that says, God has moved me from this point to this point. I have moved. But the other person has not. So for them to, to, to move forward, they think that what they, they need is way out there. So they will go searching for it out there. But the plan that God is bringing together, at some point, we are going to meet and we'll be talking the same language. So it's not an idea that says we should now blame whomever, but it is a lesson for the, us who are here because God uses the things around us for his plan and for his glory. So it's not, it's not just a question that the person has left. It's not just a question that the person has said something stupid. I mean, we were talking with the Om Dani about that, that someone will say something completely and totally wrong. Yes, true. But then what? Does it end there? Is it now a time for me to just be on this mission to correct him or her? Or is it a time for maybe to self-introspect and be like, when this person said this thing or did this thing, something stirred inside of me which was not godly. And why is that? When now I'm excited about something and I'm camping there, what about other things? I mean, we, we were talking about, about uh, in, our, in our life group, we were talking about that, for example, we, all of us, I'm not, not talking about anyone, all of us have done this. We have made this to be the number one. It's all about this. So we come here, if you ask some people, they will be even explicit. I come here for the word. Sounds very good, you know, the word, because it sustains us and so on. But God is the word. <laughs> so you can't come for the, for the word and miss the God of the word. Because then what is going to happen is that you're going to be sit, searching the word or the people that you think are bringing the word and miss everything else. Because what God is sometimes doing is that he is going to bring up here someone who's going to say something which is totally biblically incorrect. But here's what will blow you away. You walk out. Whilst you're still in that state of agitation, you find someone saying, oh, what a word. Oh my goodness, I'm so blessed. And then the question is, what should have happened in order for this person to live with that experience? Should we then have brought a correct word? We don't know. But in the bigger picture of things, we allow those moments. We allow those moments to allow this person to be built up, even though the foundation is not completely uh, correct. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, you find... No, actually, Acts chapter 18. You find Aquila and Apollos. They... It's Aquila and... Sorry, and... Um, Priscilla, yes. Aquila and Priscilla. Thank you, Tim. They find Apollos. Apollos is preaching, but the only message that he knows is the baptism of John. You go to chapter 19. Now remember, chapter 18, that's the only message. But people get saved. When Paul gets to those people, he finds believers, but who have an incomplete story where Paul now comes in and completes the story and tells them about the baptism of Jesus. The Kairos moments that God gives us are the little things that we go through in our everyday life that we have now begun to take them for granted. If you look at how God planned it out or set it up, everything is connected. There is nothing that is floating. They, they, there is no way that just floats. There is, I mean, we were talking with Om Danny to say, you look at your own life. You look at your car. You look at your house. It tells something about you. 
Is your car clean? Is your house clean? Does it have cracks? All of those issues begin. I'm not saying that they are the only picture or that they are painting a negative picture. But there is a story that we can begin to formulate about your life just based on what we observe. But sometimes it's like this. I'm guilty of this. I look at my car, I'm like, it's just a car. Come on, I'm just moving from point A to point B. And I don't take care of it. It's dirty, full of papers inside and so on. But in the bigger picture of things, this car did not come on its own. It was a blessing from God. If you go to Luke chapter 16, it says, if you are faithful with the little, or if you are not faithful with the, with the little, how can then you be entrusted with the greater? There are things that God has set in motion to prepare us for this idea that Christ has to be formed in us. Christ formed in us. That's what Paul says in the letter to the Galatians. Until Christ is formed in you. Because when you look at it, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I mean, so many other scriptures, they point to this one truth, that no one human can be able to serve God without God. No one can be able to do that on his own strength. So which means, if now we accept that it takes God to serve God, how much more to walk with him? But the, then the question continues and says, how can we walk with him if he has not been formed in us? How can he begin to talk to us about the things that he has in store for us, about his will and so on, if we do not allow this picture or this image of Christ to be fully formed inside of us. There are things that we will never get to up until Christ is formed in us. We will forever be wondering and talking and doing all these kind of things, but the real problem is the Christ in you that has not been formed. You miss the Kairos moments because God shows you those moments. In the natural, it's just things that are irritating and, and so on. But in the spiritual, with the spiritual eye, you begin to see them differently. Where other people are crying, you see an opportunity. Where people are excited, you are humbled. Because you, you now have this mind that Paul's head in Philippians chapter 4, when he says, I have learned to be okay in all circumstances. Because I know how to have and I know how not to have. Because now I've learned this one truth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. As a community sitting here, it's not about Tim. It, it breaks my heart when I hear people saying, if Tim is not coming back, then I'm leaving. Because they've missed the picture completely. They've missed it completely. Tim has never preached himself. He's always preached Christ and Christ alone. But in that process, those who are seeking after the bronze serpent will end up worshipping the person and not God. And miss the fact that he is a servant, you are a servant, all of us are, servant of, are servants of Christ. So it's not about this one space. It's not about any one thing. But it's about this bigger picture that God is trying to show us. Sometimes when you, when you, are, when you are completing a puzzle, you will pick up a piece which doesn't make sense. But because you know that this piece is part of the puzzle, you don't throw it away. You continue to search up until you, you, you can find where does this piece peace fits in and when you do the picture that you are putting together becomes clearer and all the little things that we go through are those little pieces those kairos moments that God gives us along our respective journeys only if we will take the time and not to be so careless only if we take the time and begin to say Holy Spirit I want a bigger picture 
I want a bigger view of you. I want a bigger view of things. I don't want to walk around always complaining, always wishing that it should be this way, it should be that way. I just want to be in the now. In the now and understand what is happening now. Because as I do that, that is where my victory lies. Because one thing is for sure, whatever is troubling you now, if you do not engage in the warfare that you need to, if you do not see things as you're supposed to, whatever it is, it's still coming back. Number 33, God says, as they're about to enter the land of Canaan, he says, in the land that you're about to enter, there are nations there, but you need to go in and defeat all of them. If you leave anyone, they're going to harass you. They're going to trouble you. There is nothing in terms of what God has laid out before us that we should take for granted. There is nothing that we should say, oh, this is not a part of this picture. Because the little things that we neglect now, those are the very things that cause us to be blinded and not to see things for what they truly are. I mean, when you hear some, a word like this one, some people be like, I'm going to read my word, I'm going to... Yes, it's good. But before you engage in any activity, set God as Lord in your life. Because that is where it all begins. God is Lord over my life, and everything that happens in my life, it, it happens because He has allowed it. And if that's the case, it means in your reading of the word, he is Lord. In your lacking of finances, he is Lord. In everything that is going to happen in your life, he's going to be Lord. And when he is Lord, this picture of Christ in you begins to be formed. John chapter 2, the wedding at, uh, at, at Cana. Uh, the Mary says, Whatever he says, do it. And he tells them, go and fill these pots with water. They go. They come back. They scoop the water, which is now turned into wine. And they go and serve it. But the question is, when did the miracle take place? When did the water turn into wine? Was it when he gave the instruction... Was it when the water was poured into those uh, jugs? Or was it when it was scooped out? We can't really tell. But all that we know is that if we are faithful to the word that we've been given, the miracle is bound to be revealed. The Christ in us that needs to be formed to allow us to see this picture that God is showing us is going to begin to manifest as we are faithful, as we walk faithfully in the little things, in the little moments that God gives us. Yes, some people are way ahead. And those that are way ahead should not now look down on these ones or these ones should not complain about those ones. It, it all is a perf- or it all hangs in perfect balance according to his plan. Because at some point, what is interesting is that you can have the most theologically sound person, but when, when, when that person runs out of petrol, what happens? They don't quote scripture. They need others to fill the tank. So it, 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 it's not about this one thing where I'm excelling in, but it's just about being faithful in the little. This morning, that's just the message that God laid in my heart to say, there is a bigger picture. Whether we're talking about this church, about our lives, work, kids, any, any way, there is a bigger picture. Will we not take the time to seek it out? Will we not take the time to stop complaining about issues but begin to say, I want a different perspective, Lord. If you are sovereign and you are in control of everything, then nothing is amiss. I may not get the picture now, but I'm just going to hold on to that, that nothing is, is amiss. Sometimes years later, God shows you 
say this is the reason why that and this and this had to happen but if you spend all your energy and your time now just complaining you miss the picture completely in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ our Father we bow before your throne exalting your holy name thanking you for your many mercies there is no other king like you no other God our Father words alone are not enough for king to bring you glory that's why we are just humbled in your presence saying Father receive receive us Lord as your sons receive us as your children whatever Lord is at fault in our lives help us Holy Spirit that as we continue we live for a different purpose we set our minds and our hearts and our eyes differently where we say Lord we want to see you we are tired of having just this limited and small view of who you are but we just want to see the big picture because in your fullness there is joy in Jesus name Amen